This is an interesting program. It's all Czech music, which I love to bits, and still not sufficiently well known. And this time it's Koziluch. And it's quite a good piece. And this? It's full of it's full of interest and full of fantasy, I think. How does it feel to you? I mean, there's some, you know, sp special characteristics. For example, now when I sit close to the bassoons, I actually hear that the, the way he used the bassoons is probably maybe connected to uh, French music, yes. kind, kind of Rameau, Rameau. Or whatever. That's like what I think, because it's high tessitura. Yes, which they is are a... quite high, they play most of the time unison, yeah. and, and the way he used them, it's quite unusual. So, I mean, I think it's good to be digging up some of this older Czech music and putting it in front of the public. I'm very happy. But then a completely new piece for me, which I've fallen in love with completely, is this Souk fantasy for violin orchestra. Wow, what a wonderful piece. It's absolutely astonishing piece. And it's also very new for me as well. It will be my debut as well as yours. It's my debut, but you're playing it quite beautifully. And I, I, I find it fascinating from so many different points of view. I mean, the orchestration is very full, very th thick in some ways, but um, the sonorities that he gets are, are very unusual. And it would be difficult without knowing to say exactly when it was composed. I think it's around about 1900, but it could be 20 years earlier or 20 years mm -hmm. later, couldn't it? Well, he wrote it around 1902, 1903, yeah. when he was already married to uh, Otilia, who yes. was daughter of the most famous Czech uh, composer, Antonín Dvořák. Yeah. It was also after uh, the birth of their son, yeah. but it was also very close that Antonín Dvořák and his wife died, yeah. like two or three years after he, he composed that. And somehow, well, first of all, I don't really find it as much as fantasy as like violin concerto, no. in like one movement violin concerto, and it's, it's definitely full of all emotions, of happiness, but also kind of sadness and like a little bit of prediction of the tragedies what will come in a few years in his life. So, and, and which we'll hear in the Azrael Symphony. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Anyway, good luck, because I think you're playing it wonderfully. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, one of my very favorite Borjak pieces, Symphony Number no. 5 in F, is probably a bit neglected in respect to the others. I always say about this symphony that if it was composed by someone else, a less important composer, they would probably say this is his masterpiece. But it's this the only reason why they think it as the second uh, category Dvořák symphony is that he composed f those four last symphonies, you know. And uh, if, if this was composed by, I don't know, Bizet or somebody, they would probably say this is a masterpiece. Yes, you know? it's it, true. That's the only problem, that, that it was just you know, composed by a master who yeah. made even better symphonies. You know? Exactly. I'm waving the banner for Czech music. <laughs>